Okay, let's kick off with you. <laughs> let's kick off with you, the story in the mirror. It's quite extraordinary, the amount of uh, food wastage at Westminster. I'm quite, I find this quite hard to believe. Yes. Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Food and Big Ben. MPs have tossed away 318 tonnes of subsidised grub. Uh, that's the weight of a Boeing 737. It, it actually says nosh here. Is grub the northern Oh, bird. grub, so, yeah. It's a northern thing. See, grub. Oh, I see. It says oh, no, grub. It's reading the so, first paragraph. She's picking me up now. I'm in the studio. She's picking me up now. Right, that's fine. But you're the boss. But you're the I boss. I want to know who's weighing all the this stuff. The total food bill for uh, the houses are 10.9 million. That was last year. And the subsidy was 7.5 million. And I love this. A food poverty activist said, ordinary people might be struggling to put food on the table, but these working parliamentarians are struggling to fix fitted in their bins, mm. which sums up an awful lot. They said they're trying to get a grip of it. But, you know, t they, they, uh, they earn a, a lot of money. They get the subsidised food. It, they shouldn't. I hate waste. I hate waste anyway. If my fridge is full, I'll use it rather than waste yep. it. I try not to, because that's why I was brought up. Yep. And, you know, we're living in a world now where we do waste, and Joe Public wastes a lot of food as well. But this brings it home. Yeah, Personally, I absolutely hate waste as well, especially when you see the amount of homelessness around and people yeah. struggling. Um, so why struggling don't they give it away? Themselves. I mean, there's a yeah. huge queue at the food bank near me yeah. uh, every week at the moment. Uh, but do you think, Emma, there's an issue, there's a problem with actually being able to donate this food? Because there's also a lot of red tape, isn't there? There is there's a lot of red tape and sort of safety concerns. And we've seen in recent years um, cafes like pret a and others, you know, working out ways that they can get, uh, pass on the food at the end of the day. And that's all positive. But like Pete and like you, Sally, I absolutely hate food waste. Things like, you know, whether or not you can afford it, things like fruit and vegetables just being thrown out because they can't be used. Uh, bread, milk, all of that kind of thing. As for MPs, you know, it's already subsidised. I'm not quite sure why their food should be should be so subsidised when, you know, also they have help with living costs and all of that kind of thing. So I think, yeah, we, we all need to think more carefully about how we shop and, and how we eat and how we use up food. You can throw most vegetables in a, in a stir fryer or a curry or whatever. You can eat most fruit in your mouth right now. You don't need to... You don't need to plan for that. So I think, you know, I think with limited resources, we have to get a grip on this. Yeah, no, but it's a very, very serious conversation to be had at the moment, given that so many people are struggling. Well, you think of it, 308, uh, 318 tonnes of food. There's got to be a job there for somebody to actually cut down on that. Yeah. And it would be worth paying somebody and give them a salary to save that money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You raise a very good point. Emma, uh, let's talk about the story that you pulled out in The Observer. It's been a very difficult week for Nicola Sturgeon and her husband. Of course, she spoke publicly for the first time yesterday since her husband was arrested. Mm -hmm. and, and she's always been a, a formidable communicator. I thought she did actually very well in front of the cameras. What's the latest here in The Observer? Uh, well, as you say, Scottish politics definitely not in a great place at the moment, not, certainly not the SNP anyway. Um, the, the SNP president has come out and said that the party is facing its biggest crisis for half a century. And this comes just a few weeks after the election of a new uh, first minister. Um, so, yeah, former first minister Nicola Sturgeon has come out. She made a brief statement outside her Glasgow home. Um, and she said that the, the past few days have obviously been difficult and quite dramatic at times. Um, she doesn't give details. Obviously, her husband has, was arrested and released without charge, her husband, uh, Peter Morell, who was in charge of finances at, at the SNP. Um, and she, she can't give specifics, but she just says if detectives want to talk to her about anything, she will fully cooperate with the police if they, if they want an interview. Of course, um, both of them, um, you know, refuse that, that there's been any wrongdoing and will not comment while there's a, a live police investigation mm -hmm. uh, ongoing. Um, but certainly there are lots of questions and conspiracies that hang over this, uh, the, Peter. The, the, the only thing I will question, because it is, you know, a very dangerous time to talk about it because we don't know what's happening. But what I can't get over was the, the spectacle of the way they cover the house up with uh, uh, lots of tents and marquees and police everywhere as if they were making a point. And I, I found that very intrusive. Whatever the problem is, I think, you know, was there any need for that? Yeah, 
uh, certainly very difficult with that public spectacle earlier this week. Let's move on to the mail um, on Sunday now, Emma. How COVID restrictions have hit grandparents the hardest. Are you across this story? I know this is one that Pete picked out. Do you want to comment on this? Uh, yeah, this is actually, I think this is Pete's story. It is, yeah. yeah. Pete, you... you well, yeah, well, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that anyway, because we've got this lovely rapport, you and I, <laughs> when we talk together. Um, <laughs> the grandparents are, are, are really, they're seeing a real problem through the COVID-19 uh, lockdown situation. And what is sad about it is grandparents love watching their, their, their babies, uh, their grandchildren growing up, and they found that lonely older couples were unable to get the hug from the grandparents, uh, from the grandchildren, I should say, and their mood swings, their, their poor quality of life was really bad. And also, children, grandchildren learn from their grandparents about the ways of life and get guidance, and they miss them growing up. It's a terribly sad story, but I think the whole pandemic brought out the worst in everybody. Everybody found out, oh my word, what's the world about? A quick 15, 20 seconds from you on this, please, Emma. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I think oh, elderly people who are isolated, of course, but lots of people who are isolated, young children, babies who were born during lockdown, like my baby was born during lockdown. You know, I think that people who, who need company, who need social interaction around them, really, really suffered. And I think that the details that are coming out about the reasons behind lockdown, the reasons that policies were made are, for many of us, feel are sickening, really, when you look back at the last two, three years and what this country's been through. I okay. think we're still in shock. Emma, thank you. Pete, thank you. We'll see you again next hour. Uh, hopefully lots of families together today for Easter Sunday. More at the top of the hour.